Hello everyone, today we're working on a 2007 Dodge Cummins. It's got the 5.9 Cummins engine in it. We're going to be putting a, a, a bypass filter system on it. The filter system we'll be using is a BMK 34. And I'll show you the items that come with it. We've got uh, about 12 feet of the hose. We've got the filter head. We've got the return for the uh, oil back to the valve cover oil fill spot and I've already installed a 90 degree elbow on the top. There's a swivel in there so that when you go to take the cap off you can do it without having to take the hose off. And it also comes with a EABP 90 bypass filter and it comes with fittings as well. We've got uh, the hose ends and uh, there's some bolts in there as well along with some, uh, some other fittings to help put it all together. The oil we'll be using today will be the uh, Amsoil DEO 5W40. And uh, we usually get anywhere from 20 to 25,000 mile drain intervals out of this with the bypass filter systems. We're going to be putting on most likely a longer filter. We can put on an EABP100 in place of that 90 because we have the room under there. We'll show you that once we get it all installed. And I also have brackets that I've fabricated for this install. There's a couple of standoffs. And we're actually down in front of, or behind this bumper back here, there's a uh, cross member mount for the radiator. And we're going to be bolting up to that with this uh, bracket and, and uh, standoffs. And then uh, the filter head will bolt to that. Let's see if we can get a picture of it there a little bit. And there's some items that will go with it. I got some longer bolts that go through this uh, this plate here. And I've also got an oil sample valve. Now there's two ways we can take oil samples on this engine. We can go uh, by using this here with the engine running. The only issue with that is the fan is fairly close to the front of that valve cover. And if you've got the air conditioner on, if that engine's really hot, you go to take that sample, that fan can kick in and uh, can kind of blow against it, but you can still take your sample right here um, with the bottle while it's running. You just have to decide which way you want to go because I got another way and on that uh, full flow filter there's a small eighth inch pipe plug and that's where we'll be sourcing the oil for the bypass. And we can put in a T into that fitting where that came out of and uh, we can install a sample valve right on there kind of like a small tree and you'll be sticking up enough where you can get in there and, and uh, be able to take your sample and then this here will be your port to take out oil pressure to the filter system so I'll show you that as we go some of the trucks, the newer ones with the 6.7 may have some items in the way so you may not have room for this but I wanted to show you both choices because I can send these here along these fittings, these brass fittings here um, if you want but if you want to take it out of here, then uh, obviously you won't be needing the ones, the brass fittings. So I wanted to show you that. And the other thing that I wanted to show you is the, uh, I'm a dealer for gold plug magnetic plugs. And uh, this here is the differential plug out of the front and rear differential from this truck. And it has a, a gray magnet in it, and that magnet is very weak. I can just about move that bolt with it but I can't even begin to pick it up. So this is the direct replacement for it. And <clears throat> I always like to see how much they'll, they'll pick up. So I got a little wrench here. I think it's an inch and three quarter. Let's see if I can get it off the table. There we go. Gives you some idea how much those magnets will pull. And the reason that's important is there's always fine metal in those gearboxes and the stronger that magnet is the more that metal it's going to pull out to protect your bearings. So there's also one for the engine oil and uh, uh, so there's actually three of them available for this 2007 the front differential, rear differential and the engine oil drain. So if you're interested in any of those please get a hold of me and be happy to help you with those. So we're going to get started with this install and uh, we'll be back with you. Okay here we are in the engine compartment there's one 10 millimeter head bolt, or nut right here, it needs to be coming off for that uh, air filter. And I pre-loosened that already. And then right up here on top, we have the mass airflow sensor, 
pull it out of its uh, keeper there. Press down the tab and you can pull that off, get it out of the way. And then over here we've got turbo pipe down here. I believe that's a seven millimeter on that uh, clamp. Take that off, get that out of the way. And also, I'm gonna show you a picture. I've actually got that tree in place for where the, uh, where the source of the oil is gonna be going over to feed the filter. And it's right there in the center of that. Let me get a little more light over here. There, maybe that helps a little bit. Get the splatter out of the way. Okay, right down here is your uh, filter head for the full flow filter, and right in the center of it is where that plug was at. So right here is where I put that street T in, and I've got a uh, two inch nipple in there, and then I got a 90 degree elbow, and the uh, the old sample valve will go right here, and you can adjust it around any direction you want, but it gives you room enough to get in there and get yourself a sample right off the top of that filter head. So it kind of gives you some idea of the clearance you have there. Um, like I said, I don't have the filter or the uh, valve in there yet, but um, gives you some idea where we're working at there. So we're going to take this uh, air filter completely out. We'll take the, there's some clips up here we got to snap off and get those off and out of the way. One right there and one right there. And then uh, we can pull that up. It's got to slide in a little bit. There we go. And if you've got it loose down here, it'll come right off the turbo. There it is. Okay. So we can take that up and out of the way. And we'll set that uh, down here. Okay, then this filter box, we got that nut off up here, so we'll pull that up and off. And there's a couple of pegs down there that you'll have to pull to get it up and out. There it comes. And then it's just a matter of working it out now. So you can see there's two holes right down there, one on the left, one on the right, and that's where the pegs go in. It's just a push in. So that opens up that whole area to be able to work on, get your hoses and everything. And um, These hoses, uh, we're gonna be mounting that, uh, that bypass system down. It'll be underneath here a little ways. This plastic from about right here at the end of my finger, straight over to this inner fender well, we're going to slice that off. It just kind of flops in there. The, the right side, essentially the driver's side, doesn't have this piece in there. And uh, right here's your inner fender well. And but that's going to be in the way for making a loop of those hoses because they have to come out towards the outside of the truck and make a loop back. And one of them is going to go right up here and go back to that uh, fitting right over here. Okay, and then the other one's got to come up along the fan shroud and that'll go back to the return right up here on the valve cover. So I'm going to I'm going to show cutting that cutting that out. But like I said, it's right almost right in line with this uh, tab right here at the end of my finger. And just make a take a slicer wheel and we can just slice it right on over and take out that little piece of plastic down there to give us room to make the loop for those hoses. Okay, so right here is the mount we're going to use and uh, we're going to take these two nuts off right here and right here and then we're going to put the standoffs in place of them and that's a 15 millimeter. Standoff is a three quarter inch socket, and we're going to torque them to around 45 to 50 foot pounds. Okay. So, the next thing we're going to do. 
is we'll mount this up with the two bolts that are provided with my kit and that'll go on just like so okay so we got the two 15 millimeter head bolts here flange head bolts and we'll mount that up and those bolts will get torqued to again around 45 to 50 foot pounds so and there's clearance there between the head of that bolt and the uh, and that uh, angle iron okay that's good and solid all right next thing we're going to get the, uh, the filter head ready to mount up okay um, the fitting that I'm going to use, I'm going to be using two different fittings here. This uh, steel 90 degree elbow, um, if you want, you could use two of these up here. Now they only send two of them along with the kit, and right here is the part number for them. It's a 90 degree fitting, 8 inch pipe thread on one side, and a, dash, a 7 16 dash 20 threads per inch GIC on the other side, and that's what uh, this is right here. Now this seals on the taper right here, so don't put any pipe dope on this part. The only place you have to put the pipe dope is on the threads of the uh, pipe threads here because they're tapered and uh, that'll help them seal up. Okay, so if you want to get some more of these steel elbows when you order your BMK34 kit, you can order the BP242 and you can order these individual fittings. Um, because one of them is going to go up on the uh, oil fill cap <clears throat> and then this other one I'm going to use here. But uh, another thing, <clears throat> where this uh, sample tree goes up on top of that original full flow filter, um, I'm using a T that is supplied with my kit, you know, if you're putting on and going to use this uh, for sampling. If you're not going to use this for sampling, then you'll have to use either a 90 degree elbow to go in there, or you'll have to use this here elbow to go in there. And the trouble with this elbow is we're awful close to a, a pipe in there, a coolant pipe. And I don't know if you're going to have swing room to make the swing to tighten it. So you may have to use this along with the adapter here to get you to the hose to feed pressurized oil. Okay. So, but if you want this here, if you want to, I like using less fittings if I can because it just leaves less areas, you know, possible for leaks. Um, so this here is the part number if you want to get more of these uh, fittings right here. And there's only two of them in the kit. So you could put uh, two on here easy enough. So I would, you know, you, you need at least one more if you want to do it on the filter head and have one on the, on the return back to the, to the valve cover. Okay, so these fittings, we've got, uh, this is the oil coming in right here. It says in, and that goes in the outside of the filter, goes through the filter, and it comes up the center. And right there is your restricted orifice. And then the out oil is going up to your valve cover. So we're going to tighten these up on an angle, probably so that they're off, pointing slightly forward. And I'll put this one here on. And then that one will have this on, just like so. But they'll both be kind of on an angle, just enough room so that we can get our fittings on for the hose. and they'll be sitting almost side by side. Sort of like that, okay? Or we can make it over just a little bit more. We can adjust that a little bit before we bolt this up. So when we go to bolt this up, I'm sending along these, these green bolts are a little bit longer than the ones that come with the kit. And the reason for that is we're going through quarter inch steel and we're going through this thick aluminum here as well. And by the time you get that quarter inch of uh, steel on there, you don't have enough to get to the lock part of that nut. So with the green ones up there, they're about a quarter of an inch longer. It allows you to get to the lock part of the nut. So that's why I'm sending those along. Okay, so we're going to get these fittings all tightened up, and uh, that'll be the next thing we're going to do. And then we'll be back with you. Okay, the pipe dope that I'm using has some uh, Teflon in it. It's a pipe sealant with Teflon. The Teflon uh, on these threads, what it does, it makes it more, um, reduces the friction so that you can tighten this because this is a tapered pipe. It's thinner at the bottom than it is at the top of the threads. 
So it's sort of like a wedge. As you tighten it, it's getting tighter and tighter against the metal you're screwing it into. Okay, so I've got that on here. When you go to tighten these, there's no real torque spec. It's just a matter of you want to get them tight enough so that they don't leak, but you don't want to get too crazy with them. I mean, I've got a small wrench. It's about an 8-inch one. And uh, I just set it on a table so it doesn't slide away on me. And there's about what we want. We still have room to get the other one tight right beside it. If you're going to use two of these, then you're going to have to swing this out of the way and then get that middle one tight, and then you can swing this one back. There we go. And I can still adjust these a little bit for angle where I need to, but that uh, gives you some idea where we want to start with. And again, this one, yeah, they're both going to have to come out because we've got that mount there, and the frame's kind of right over here. So we're both going to have to come up and make a loop and go back over. We'll show you that here next. Okay, these hose ends, uh, this is what it looks like when it's all installed. They're two pieces, and the shell unscrews from the insert, and it's reverse threads inside here. Before you start, you want to make sure that you've got a nice square cut, and this is a tool I use for cutting. It's a blue point, snap-on blue point YA-1000A. It's got kind of a razor blade cutter in there, and it, it keeps the holes true. You can get a nice square cut on it. It's like that. And what I'll do, it's hard to get started kind of by hand. So what I do is I'll take a drill and put my uh, 3 8 drive adapter in there, and i got a 5 8 socket. And it's got to be turning backwards, reverse. Then I'll get a good firm grip on the hose and I'll screw it in until it bottoms out. Right there, it's starting to twist out of my hand so I know it's bottomed out. Then I'm going to back it off about maybe a, a half, a quarter to half a turn. There it is. I don't know if you can see inside, but uh, we're not completely bottomed out. We got probably about a sixteenth of an inch from the, the end of the metal. Then I'll put a little bit of uh, a little bit of oil in there to help lubricate it as it spins in that hose. And then if you want to, you can either put a wrench on here or clamp it in the vise. And what we do is we tighten this insert down until it makes contact right here with the top, just like this one is. You can see it's bottomed out against that outer shell. So that's how the hoses go together. Okay, we're going to set this hose in there. What I did is I put the hose ends on the complete piece of hose that, that we have. And uh, we'll bring the one right in here. And this other one here we will bring up and hook on right here. Okay, and we have all the rest of the hoses down low. And we got plenty of it. Okay, so it's hanging down there, and we'll put the hose ends on down there is what we'll do. So the next thing is we're going to get that uh, filter head. We're going to get those hose ends on, and we'll be putting the filter head on. Okay, before we make the cut down below on the uh, hose for the length of it, I'm routing these hoses right here so I know where I want them. And I've got a, a long, heavy-duty zip tie here that I'm going to be put, including in my kit. And this return hose, we want to bring it down because that air box comes to about right over here. And if we bring this hose on top of this air, uh, after cooler line, um, it's going to be rubbing on the corner of that box. So we're going to put one hose on each side. And we'll zip tie that in place. So we've got them located where I want them before we cut those hoses down there. And I'm going to give just a little bit extra right here. And we're going to zip tie this as well right here. And we'll trim up these ends here when we get done. But that gets our hoses kind of where we need them so they aren't rubbing on the air box. Got plenty of room for the air box in here. And uh, now we can cut the hoses down below. 
Okay, I've got this filter head up there just kind of loose. And I wanted to get these hoses routed. And uh, this one here I've got cut to the length I want. Right there. And that's the dirty oil coming over to the bypass filter. And then this hose right here is going to... It's going to come in. And we're going to be really close. Probably about right there. So I'm going to make a cut right about the end of my thumb. But it uh, gives you some idea how we're routing those... Uh, those hoses and uh, we'll be ready to put that together here as soon as we get the hose ends on. Okay something I want to show you on this insert for some reason they stopped the threads about an eighth inch short of where this nut right here is or the stop and if you look at the threads inside this sleeve they're about probably three sixteenths threads. Well by the time you get this up tight show you here by the time you get that up where they want it, you've only got maybe a sixteenth of an inch of threads. It ain't much. So here's my suggestion to you. When you go to tighten these up, stop as soon as you touch. Just take it up until it just touches. Because if you go any further, you will start to strip the threads out in that sleeve. So right there is good. Just take it right up until it touches the sleeve. And don't try to go any tighter. Because otherwise you will strip out. Because again, you see that, that neck. As I slide that down, you can see that last eighth inch, there's no threads on it. So by the time you get that up tight, you haven't got much for threads holding. Okay, when we go to uh, get these hoses cut right length, um, I'm going to use this tab right here where my thumb is. There's a hole right there. I'm going to put a bolt through there and I'm going to clamp these two hoses right to that tab using a bolt through that hole and a couple of large washers. Okay, so just wanted to make you aware of that. When you go to make your loops, um, I would make sure you're holding it. I got one hand on the camera. I can't bend this other hose around, but you want to have your hoses routed right there where you're going to be able to get that that bolt in through that hole and you're going to want to have a hose on each side of that hole okay and then route your your gooseneck over here over to your fitting to your hose end where you want it to go just like you see in this first hose so you just wanted to make you aware of that so you have enough hose before you cut it okay we got the hoses all made now we're going to tighten down the fittings and I think I'm going to want to put a backup wrench on here because it's going to start spinning that hose. It's going to spin it in a way that I don't want it spun. Yeah, it still wants to spin. I'm going to have to get another hand to help me with this. But you get the idea and you can kind of see the angles that I run this at. So that's what we end up with there. But I'm going to finish tightening these up, get them good and tight. And uh, then we'll be ready to mount it up in there. All right, we got the hoses on nice and tight, and uh, we're ready to put the green bolts in for that filter head and get the nuts on the back side. So we're going to put these on next, get them all tightened up, and we may need some specialized wrenches to get at a couple of those. We'll see here how it goes. Okay, I've got a 30 degree, 60 degree open end wrench here, and you can get on this nut or I should say the head of the bolt right there or and that might work the best right there I got a ratchet wrench on the back side or else you can come over the top just like this and do it as well let's see if I can get it on there, there we go otherwise you're going to have a hard time getting in there to hold that bolt And then the same thing probably on these two as well. That 3060 uh, wrench is going to work pretty good. You might be able to get a regular half inch wrench in there. We've got the top one as well. I'm going to try and get on that top one. Get that tight next. But you'll definitely need something here, on, especially on this inside one. There, got it. And that 3060 wrench is going to be the way to go. So 
So we'll get them all tightened up and then we'll be ready to install the filter. I gotta put the clamps on them hoses yet. So that'll be the next thing. Okay, I've got these clamps here for the hoses. My hands might be in the way a little bit here for taping, but we'll get those on. Okay, and what I have, I got two, the clamps will be part of my kit. There's a couple of thick extra heavy fender washers. One will go on top of that, uh, that hole. And then the other one will go on the bottom side, just like that. And then the bolt will go through the two clamps and that'll be on the top side. So my hands are gonna be in the way up here, but I wanted to show you how that all goes together. So we're going to get that put together and I'll show you what it looks like when we're all done. Okay, I wanna show you the difference in the two filters. It's probably about, about an inch and a half. So if we put this one on, you can kinda of see where the bottom of it is in relation to the bumper. And that's the ABP 100. And the ABP 90, if we put that one on, I guess it's gonna be up there a little higher. You have to decide which one you wanna use. This is the one that comes with the uh, BMK 34. So, gives you some idea there. Okay, here's an overview of it. I got that EABP 100 on there. And you can see how we got the hoses run. And we've got, uh, we've got the hoses clamped there. And I've also got another zip tie up there. And I gotta cut off the tail, but that keeps it from uh, making contact. See if I can get a little light up there. Keeps it from making contact with the rubber hose, cooling hose. And uh, I'll go on the top side and show the final routing. Um, but that gives you some idea what we have down here on the bottom side. Okay, here's an overview of the lines and the routing of them. Now that everything's all bolted up and where it needs to be. And I'll shoot another picture here, another shot after I get the air filter and all that put together. When you go to tighten up the uh, fitting here on this valve cover return line, you want to back up the hose so it doesn't spin and twist. And you want to back up this uh, so you don't start busting out the, the uh, swivel on that, on that uh, cap. So I put two of them on there and then I go in between it and I can tighten that down good and snug and still hold everything where it needs to be and keep from damaging anything. There we go. So now the hose doesn't have any twist in it. You go to take it off, you're good to go. Okay, when we go to take a sample here, we can bring the bottle in and you can grab it with your hand right under here. You can have that cap off and then you can go ahead and take your sample. And when you're done, you can bring it up, put your cap on, and you're done. Okay, so if you're going to take a sample down here with the valve setup that I've got, that's how that'll work. And if you want to take the sample over here with the engine running and the fans right there, like I said, it can get messy because it can blow that oil all over the place. But you can still take your sample right here just like this with the engine running up the temp. So you have to choose. I can uh, supply the parts for the one down on the, on the filter head or you can use the, uh, the fill to take your sample. Okay, I've, I've pre-filled the filter and it's all full of oil and uh, it's all ready to go. So go ahead and start it up. Okay, we're all done with this bypass install. We ended up using nearly four quarts more of oil above and beyond the, the, what it originally held. 
So I would have about a gallon on hand. Um, if any of you want the brackets that I have or uh, the tree for the oil sample valve, um, be specific which way you want to go. If you want any of the gold plugs, contact me. I'm happy to help you out. If you want to buy the Amsoil at wholesale, uh, you can contact me. I'll set you up with a wholesale account or you can go through uh, the, uh, in my description, there's a link there to set yourself up as a preferred customer as well. So I want to thank you for watching my video. Have a great day. Thank you for watching my video. Be sure to check out my other videos and subscribe to my channel at youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Donswell. I'd like to introduce you to Amsoil Synthetic Lubricants. We have the most complete line of synthetic lubricants on the market that offer you greatly reduced wear, extended drain intervals, longer equipment life. You can check that out at my website, donswell.com. I also have a website for looking up fluid capacities. It's fluidcapacity.com. You can go there and print off the capacity of your engine oil cooling system transmission, transfer case differentials. Be sure to like us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Don Synthetic Lubes. Thank you and have a great day.